So on to our public hearing on fiscal year 2017 millage rate budget. As I mentioned, we will first hold our second of two fiscal year 2017 millage rate and budget hearings. I do have a statement that I'm required to read and then Brad will also read a required statement. So the purpose of this public hearing is to receive public input and allow the public to ask questions concerning the authority's tentative millage rate and tentative operating and capital budget for fiscal year 2017. Copies of our tentative budget are available if you've not already obtained one. The tentative fiscal year 2017 budget is included herewith, totaling $90,240,661. The operating budget is $70,175,913 and the capital budget is $20,064,748. The millage rate for fiscal year 2017. The fiscal year 2017 tentative millage rate is 0 0.7500. The fiscal year 2017 roll back rate is 0.6838. The fiscal year 2017 tentative millage rate of 0 0.7500 is 9.68% greater than the roll back rate and PSTA's millage rate limit is 0 0.7500. The tentative property tax rate is used to fund the fiscal year 2017 budget. Uh, next in the queue is David. On page uh, 10 of the, uh, of the presentation, there's, there's some scenarios that go out uh, as it starts in 2016, forecast that it goes out through 2021 essentially showing a five-year plan that, um, and regardless of the scenario that you pick, it shows us um, in, the, in the red as far as uh, reserves uh, at the end of, of 2020. And I'm wondering, just as I, as we, you know, we think of in, in our own particular cities and budgets, how many budgets have been put together in that, in that way, um, where you know in the next five years that that you're going to be running these deficits. And I'm wondering how wise it is to be pulling together plans like this that simply say, um, well, it's going to be negative. It's going to be negative in year three in some cases, in year four for sure, in all cases, in year five. These are dramatic numbers. And yet we haven't begun to address that as a, as a board, how we're going to overcome that. I keep hearing things from a, a different people that will be approaching federal government, state government, MPO, all these different groups um, about additional funding, but yet we're ready, to, we're ready to pass a budget tonight that talks about buses and the types of buses and the numbers of buses without any adjustments there. We're willing to take on a new service expansion plan, which uh, I'm not going to root against. I hope it works and I hope it's very successful, but you know, I talked about putting a pilot together, not utilizing the last bit of millage that we had. Um, I, you know, I just, I, I just, I'm just not sure I understand the, the fiscal um, caution that we should be having um, on behalf of our writers uh, that that clearly say, yeah, we want more service, but we know that we. We want there to be a base service in year four and five and six when it looks like we're going to be, you know, operating you know, pretty some pretty hefty negative numbers. So um, again, I I just caution everybody on this on this you know, using your last bit of millage here when I don't know what our our home values are going to do in the next few years. Um, I, we, I don't think the rollback rate, whatever that would be this year. My gosh, that's that's a big number to be using. And yet, that's not enough for us. And we're going to use the balance of it on a program, on, a, on an expanded service that we hope will work. I see no reason why we can't use a pilot um, and see how it works, market it that way, and come back if it's successful. And be proud of it if it's successful. And I don't want to hear that when you put a service in place, well, you just can't take it away. Well, when we stop having revenues exceed expenses on an annual basis, you're going to have to start making choices. It's either going to be cutting personnel, it's going to be cutting services, or it's going to be, you're going to have to do something to balance the budget. And um, frankly, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned by what I see here. And, uh, and so uh, 
but I'm not going to be supporting the millage rate tonight. I think it's irresponsible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Eggers. And our next speaker is Mayor Beavis. Thank you. I kind of feel like this is the voice, and when you push the button, my chair should spin around because you see it, <laughs> it light up. I don't want to repeat um, a lot of what I said at our last meeting, other than the fact that uh, I also agree that I don't think we're in a position where we need to uh, raise our millage to the last point that we can raise it. Having said that, there have been comments that have been made that how do we go to the MPO or anybody else to ask for money if we haven't maximized our own monies in whatever way, shape, or form that is. And, you know, my stance on trying to get the non-participating uh, municipalities to participate, I think that's one way. And in the city of Oldsmar, we just, <clears throat> excuse me, approved our millage rate. We haven't raised our millage rate for 25 years. And in fact, in that same 25 years, we have reduced our millage rate. Yet we continue to get funding. We got $1.3 million from the state for our Olympic style BMX track. We got about $11 million from Swift Mud for our reverse osmosis, water, reverse osmosis water plant. So I don't know that that completely agrees with the logic that was uh, brought forward that we need to spend all of our money before we go asking anybody else for anything else. So um, I again will not be supporting the military. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Beavis. And our next speaker is Commissioner Scott. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I mean, the concerns that I have are, are very similar. I mean, we have a little over $3 million budget surplus from last year. And basically, just by showing up for work, we're getting a $3.1 million increase just because of the increased property values. To me, I just don't understand why $6.1 million isn't enough. Um, I think it is. Um, but also, on the, on the major budget assumption, I've noticed that the increased passenger fares with increased service is shown as $100,000 in tonight's presentation, but it was $200,000 previously. So. Uh, and I have a question there, which, which one is it? it it's two hundred thousand dollars. We made that adjustment. Um, we made an adjustment prior to the first budget hearing, and the budget includes two hundred thousand dollars. I did notice that incorrectly the on the budget summary document that was included, it it had, that has not been updated. But we'll make sure that is updated on the website. It will be two hundred thousand dollars in revenue estimated for the new service. Okay, well, I appreciate you clarifying that point for me. Those, those are my comments and my concerns. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Scott. 